So very good morning, uh, my dear students. So this is uh, another new semester for your third year, the semester. So in this uh, plant protection course, you are going to study. So in the plant protection technology, it's a course, it's very important as a technology students. Why? So because as a technologist, you should develop a technology to protect the plant from the pest. Right? So if you are taking an agriculture, there are two sides. So one is a production side, other one is a protection side. So technology you can use in both sides, production side as well as the protection side. So protection side is mainly focusing on how you are going to protect a plant or how you are going to protect your farm field by using a technology or other innovative methods to prevent the attack of insect pests, non-insect pests, diseases, and or maybe other wild animals. So nowadays you have heard about that the very big problem is in wild elephant and the human. Right? So there is a conflict. So monkeys are in the process of making damages. Deers and wild pigs. Right? So wild animals are nowadays yes, increasing. And the problems to the human agriculture production. So and now the government has banned the pesticides, especially the insecticides and the chemical fertilizers. So therefore, the another innovative method or alternate method for the pesticides, you have to invent to safeguard your crops from these insects and the diseases because the fungicides are banned, insecticides are banned, so therefore, you have to find another innovative methods. So if you are going to invent a method or technique or any technology to protect the crops, so you should study the fundamentals in the plant protection, right? Fundamentals in the plant protection. So we will move through the definition of the pests and different categories of the pests and how you can differentiate whether the insects when it will become as a pest or the disease causing organisms will become as a pest or wild animals will become as a pest. Right? So pest is a broad term. Right? Pest is a broad term. So a disease is also included in the pests. But in different chapter for different branches so you would have studied maybe in plant pathology or the phytopathology or microbiology this is mainly focusing on the microorganisms that are causing the detrimental effect to the plant animal wild health and biodiversity everywhere so anything right so that may be something you you may confuse that one, whether what is what is microbiology and the process so microbiology is a science and dealing with the microorganism. It can you can use this microorganism for beneficial purposes or detrimental uh, effect of or impact of these microorganisms. But the pest is broad term, so diseases are also included in the pests. Right? So many insects, right? many insects, so many mites, many nematodes, would have heard about that word, nematodes, and weeds, a plants, bacteria, fungi, viruses, and vertebrates, right? Or some of the vertebrates, vertebrates means wild animals, etc. whatever it is, if it is causing an economical damage to the crops or the animal husbandry, we call it as a pest. Or in any organism interacting 
with this animal crop and welfare of the human being, we call it as a pests. So many people thinking that the, all the insects are pests. Right? So all the insects are not pests. All the animals are not pests. When they are causing a damage beyond a certain level, we call it as an economic threshold level. We call these organisms as a pest. At least 5% loss. So an economic yield loss. So an at least 5%, we call it as a pest. Minimum of 5%. So that's what um, has been estimated. Minimum of 5%. If it is not, if it is below the 5%, then even in some extent, so in many literature, you could have come across with that, at least 10% of the crop yield, you can allow to organisms to eat. Because the also, these are the organisms, these are also consuming food from these uh, plants and animals. But you cannot completely kill or eradicate these organisms from the environment. If you are creating the uh, uh, environment, or if you, are, if you are thinking that these environments are not suitable only for the human being, then there will be a problem, right? Then there will be a problem. So therefore, so we are defining the pest is an, an organism whose activities interfere with the human health, convenience, comfort, profit, and or causes the economic damage to the crop and animal husband, right? We call it as a pest. Right? Convenience means, so sometimes you are sitting in the chair, some of the bed bugs, right? Um, make some punches and suck the blood. It's an inconvenient to you, right? So when you are sleeping, so the mosquitoes is make problem will not allow you to do the good sleep. Right? Some of you in the kitchen, so you, can have, uh, you can have some of these bread and uh, uh, these uh, wheat flour and rice grains. Sometimes these beetles make problems. That's what you are putting under solar radiations to remove this. Sometimes cockroaches in home. Sometimes the house flies. So sit on the food and uh, transmitting the diseases to a human being. That is, we call it as an inconvenience. So profit losses. So if we are finding the cockroaches, you will feel that this is a discomfort, right? In your room, you are finding the cockroaches. You may feel that what is there? And profit. I saw. So you are in your field. You are expecting that so much of. Uh, um, profit from your field, but if your pest is attacking, then you will lose your profits. That's what this organism we call it as a pest. In the broad term, some literatures, they do, some scientists define as the pests broadly include living creatures, whatever the organisms, affecting food, fiber, shelter, and pests of public health importance. Pests of public health importance mean that are disease causing pests or disease transmitting pests on human being, like mosquito transmitting the dengue viruses, chikungunya viruses, and malaria viruses. Right? That is for public health importance. And nuisance pests. Right? Nuisance pests mean sometimes so, um, bed bugs and house flies. So it will come a lot from um, the rainy season. We call it as a nuisance pest. Pest outbreak, it means it's an occurrence of large number of cases of a pest or diseases in a short period. We call it as a pest outbreak. So first an organism. The organism you consider as a pest when it is causing the more than 5% of the yield losses. So that is we call it as a pest. So pest outbreak means the pests that are causing, the process of causing the large number of spot or frequent damages. And rather, those areas, if it is consecutively, 
occurrences, the attack you are finding that one, we call it as a pest outbreak. Now we are calling it as we call it as a uh, COVID pandemic. Pandemic COVID outbreak, if it is happening only in Nairobi, if it is happening all around the world, in some isolates of the all around the world, we call it as a pandemic all around the world. If it is only in Jaffna, we call it as a uh, it's an uh, spot, only particular area, but it's a pandemic is something. First, it will come as an outbreak, then it will change into as an epidemic or pandemic. Epidemic means sudden outbreak and uh, wipe out many populations. So COVID is kind of an epidemic, right? And also pandemic. Epidemic means if it is there in the Sri Lanka, inside the Sri Lanka also it causing a lot of deaths now. A lot of people are getting infected now. That is we call it as an epidemic. If you are thinking the broad geographical area, the world is a pandemic. Everywhere it is causing them. Right? So that is uh, the, the basic thing. So you should be very clear about uh, Then the classifications of the pests, right? Classification of the pest mean, so based on the occurrences, based on the cost, based on the season, based on the which economic part is attacked, in which area of the country is being attacked by this pest or surviving this pest in which, which part of a, which location, which isolate, we, according to that, we are classifying the pest into different categories. One is we call it as a regular pest. The regular pest means when you are cultivating a particular crop, this insects, this means insects, so will be there and it will cause an economic damage. That is, we call it as a regular pest. For example, if you are cultivating the brinjol, definitely you can expect these brinjol shoot and fruit borer everywhere. That is, we call it as a regular pest. Nowadays, another regular pest is papaya mealybug. If you are cultivating papaya everywhere, definitely you will expect this papaya mealybug in your papaya plant, papaya plant. That is, we call it as a regular pest. Another one is a rice stem borer. Rice jello stem borer, right? Rice jello stem borer means so if you are cultivating paddy everywhere, it may be in candy or I'm sorry, matala, it may be in uh, matara, or it may be in hambandot, it may be in jaffna, it may be in anradapur, polonar, anywhere. Whatever the cultivars you are cultivating, definitely the yellow stem borer attack will be there. So that's what we call it as a regular pest. This is an associated, very closely associated with the rice plant. It will not attack in other crops. Occasional pest. Right? This pest, this category of pest, infrequently occur. No close association with that particular crop. For example, case worm in rice. If you are cultivating rice, definitely you can expect the yellow rice tempura. But case worm you will not expect everywhere. In some part, infrequently, you can occur. You can find it. This is we call it as an occasional pest. It's an occasional case. Some some uh, some of you can attend the lectures occasionally, no? But this week you will attend. Then after two months you will attend another lecture. This is called as an occasion. Regular means somebody at attend the lectures every day without fail. We call it as an regular. Right? And the seasonal pest. Seasonal pest means particular season only you can expect. Right? Dear, so definitely some pests may be come across, you may come across in the Maha season, not in jealous season. Or sometimes, sometimes some pest attack will be there when the rainy season start, just before the rainy season start, or just completion of the rainy season. You can expect. Or some pests you can expect on the dry season, no in wet season. That is, we call it as a seasonal pest in mango hopper. Right? 
so mango hoppa is mean everywhere if you are going there in the mango orchard field you will feel so lots and thousands and thousands this is we call it as a mango hoppa right i i can show you the next slide this is a mango hoppa if you are going there and man this is jellos tempur regular pest this is uh, brinjol shoot and fruit borer regular pest this is case worm this is mango stem borer this is we called as an occasional pest this one we called as a seasonal pest this is these two seasonal pest why we are calling it as seasonal pest chili grapes uh, in chili definitely you can expect in the dry season you are cultivating chili and mango hopper you can expect in is a moist the condition is very moist immediately after raining or unexpected rain is happen if the mango orchard is a dense or you did not prune for a long period shading is there definitely you can expect this mango hopper your leaves become blackish and mango then the leaves becomes like a burnt like appearances in the tips right then also you can expect if you are going there you may feel that it's a uh, shower summery like rain rain showers why because of honeydew then after 2 to 3 days it, your leaves and everything will become a blackish color so adjacent plants you are growing and the mango orchard will become a blackish why this is because of mango hoppa is a seasonal pest now so in jaffna in everywhere on the all the mango trees you can exp, uh, you can see because unexpected uh, this rain is created everywhere in mango orchard hoppers full of hoppers can you know oh, it can it will eat all the young fresh leaves and flower buds then you no mango everything will go and persistent pest persistent pest mean occur on the crop throughout the year and is very difficult to control we call it as a persistent pest that's what these two chili thrips and mango meliba in guava and papaya these chili thrips and meliba we call it as a persistent pest this crop if you are cultivating definitely you can expect whether it is a season or not season doesn't matter in any growth stage you can expect these two desert locust locust was a very big problem um, in the last couple of uh, last years so because it's a migrant pest it created a big heavy damages in india and pakistan up in in uh, african countries billions of billions of dollars created a famine there now people are dying because of the without food because they are this one has eaten because it will come as a billions in number right millions in number if it is coming so one paddy field will complete in 5 to 10 minutes it finish eating and finish right so this is we call it as a persistent pest and sporadic pest so sporadic pest mean pest occur in isolated localities during some period isolated localities sometimes in andradapura sometimes you can expect in the varagampa or if you are taking the candy district or sometimes you can expect in um, panidini right so if you are except if you are taking the nuralia district then definitely you can expect or in maskel no in other so like that so this is we call it as a uh, sporadic pest through isolated localities right so this is only coconut slug caterpillar and rice ear head bug rice ear head bug you can see this picture this is a rice ear head bug this is a coconut slug caterpillar another one is there we call it as a pest epidemic this pest will come finish whatever it is within a short period of time all the plants will go that's what i told you is a desert locust so this in last year it created a very big economic damage it inflicted uh, millions of million hectares wipe out within one or two weeks that's what people are crying without food is created a famine in africa especially in east africa 
right? Because this is also migrant pest. From the Africa, it will from this uh, Sakaran, right? This Sakaran desert. Then it will come to the India and Pakistan border. It will go up to sometimes Nepal, Bangladesh border. Then it will again go back to Sakara. It survived. And it will go to the again Africa like that. It will move. And while it is moving, it will move as a millions in number, right? In one hectare, two hectare spread, it will sit and finish it in one or two days. So many African countries, because people were crying, because it was the paddy field and the other sorghum and field were at the time of harvesting. It has eaten away, so whole harvest, without harvesting, whole grains and leaves. No food for these people. This created a famine, right? And the potential pest. So potential pest means this pest that come highly noxious if allowed to establish. So earlier, in 10 years ago or a decade ago, these mealybugs and aphids, right? The mealybugs and aphids were, we call it as a potential pest, mean these pests were not, uh, these insects were not considered as a major pest or pest. Why? Because natural control factors were there, these control factors automatically control these insects. So now, now so we have killed all these natural factors because of this application of this pesticide. Now this one we consider as a pest, potential pest. If you are not managing, it will become a very big problem. So potential pest. That's what there are. So eight uh, numbers of eight different classification of pests there. Sometimes, so this classification may vary, right? In the literature, literature, sometimes you can come across with this more than that, sometimes lesser than that. But this is, you know, so this eight is important for you and um, you should uh, remember that. Right? These are the examples of insects. So the classification of the pest, so that's, that is based on the uh, occurrence. We classify this pest based on the occurrence. So this one is based on the economic damage. How much of economic damage cause? You can also classify the insect into two different groups. You can classify it as a major pest if this in fact causing the damage more than the 10 percentage of the total production, we call it as a major pest. Then another one is they are minor pests. This pest, if the pest is causing the damages less than the 10 percent and over than the 5 percent, just below the 10 percent and over 5 percent, we call it as minor pests. If it is below five, we will not consider that a pest so because it's a negligible loss. 95 percent is our confidence interval always. The five percent we can allow it for other insects, other organisms to eat because these are organisms they are it need food. No? Right? So that's what based on the occurrence we can classify in eight different groups based on the damage, economic damage you can classify into two different groups. Major pest and minor pest. So, how does insects become pest? Right? Before that, uh, if you have any uh, clarifications, please you can ask questions. Right? So, the another important topic of the uh, fundamentals is then how do insects become pest? So, in the nature, so these organisms, we call it as an insects, right? But if it is causing your crop in more than the 5%, we call it as a pest. Earlier, there were no pest because their damage rate was less. But due to these man-made anthropogenic activities, this pushed these insects to become a pest. There are five important reasons why these insects become pests. So if you're, 
if you want to get a more information regarding that so you have to go back to our earlier agriculture right so in earlier agriculture so when the human being were shifting from one area to another while he is so the moving as a group and eating and going and eating and going right it's a migrant period there were no food no place for city a survival as like an animals human also as a group were moving from one area to one area to like while um, buddha moving they cultivated as a chera then moving then human being were settled closer to these irrigation areas then the, he started cultivation of crops when he was uh, were moving they were eating and they preserved some seeds the cultivating eating and moving so when they were moving they selected some of these seeds and used for permanent food because they were a water reservoir so they can, they selected the place they made a house and started to cultivation right when the human is settled man started this earlier it was there is the natural ecosystem there were no man made ecosystems all were natural ecosystem so when the human started to cultivate so he changed that environment into agro ecosystem right from the natural ecosystem to agro ecosystem because he selected and cultivated certain crops needed for their food if they are cultivating that certain plants for their food as a mono crop only that crop the food is abundant why because they need a food that's what they cultivated as a sole crop if they are cultivating the sole crops the food is abundant so the insect will be attracted why because food is there in our ab abundant the insects came there right so no so much of food if there so much of food they eat and started their wealthy lives multiply multiply and multiplies insect populations increased so when the insect population increased damage was very high the human was absent why it is happening and it's created a famine for them but they thought that they they can invent something to manage these pests so they invented the chemicals they used these synthetic they started so early a natural insecticide then when the science is grown technology advanced they conserve, converted these natural extracts into synthetic chemicals then started to spray many insects died the human was very happy the return was very high from the field right from the field then the human was well the human population started to increase 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 human population multiply and multiply and multiply now the problem was their food population is increasing so now you can see that the population projection is nearly so there it will reach 10 billion in 2050 so now it's in 8.1 billion the human population is increasing they need a food what they have done is they want at the high yielding varieties because land is limited water is limited they want a high yielding varieties that's at the green revolution started by the Norman Bolong as a scientist from this Mexico US that's what the cement is here right cement is a research institute for the wheat and maize research Norman Bolong he started to develop the high yielding varieties if the high yielding varieties if they giving a high yield mean they need so much of input 
then they started to produce synthetic fertilizer for them. Right? Lot of synthetic fertilizer thrown into the environment. So they gave high yield. So why they are, it is giving a high yield, so much of insects, they sprayed synthetic chemicals, synthetic pesticides, fungicides, weedicides, sprayed into the environment. So insects were killed and fungicide disease organisms were killed. And they were getting more return. Indiscriminately, they used the insecticides. You see, insect insect indiscriminate use of insecticides, cultivation of monoculture. We are cultivating monoculture means favorable weather condition for the insects. So high yielding varieties. So increasing populations for need of for area for living. They destroyed the natural habitat of the insects and the other organisms. Why that's a problem is nowadays the elephant is man and conflicting because we have cleared a forest. You intruded, invaded their forest. That's what these elephants are now very angry. Wherever it's seeing human beings kicked and killed. Because you have encroached, human population is increased. Right? So you have thrown out of chemicals into the environment, soil and the forest and everywhere, water reservoirs nowadays. Then the problem was started because many people were sick and many birds were laying egg without eggshell. So the scientist we called as Rachel Hassan, the famous scientist in the US, environmentalist, she reported, uh, rewrote a book in a silent spring, we called as a silent spring and she reported the impact of the pesticide, especially the DDT and malathion earlier, Monoco, the ogonochloral chemicals, ogonochlorinated chemicals, early chemicals. So it will be there in the environment nearly 50 to 100 years in the environment, water and uh, sediments, and it will cause 50 to 100 years to the whatever the organism in the environment. With this report, the people were very upset. They started to raise their voices against these chemicals and insecticides. So therefore, they started, uh, they recommend, UN, United Nations recommended uh, techniques to manage these insect and pests. They call it as an integrated pest management. So it was started to mean integration of all the management aspects, traditional cultural aspect and physical aspects, or new innovative uh, these greenhouses and other houses or everything you should use to manage the pest not to control if you are applying chemicals all the insects will die whatever the natural enemies mean whatever the natural enemies they are eating these insects and pests they will also die for example earlier so sometimes you may know, we have seen that one lot of dragonflies and damselfly around your environment. Would have seen the lot of frogs and lot of snakes. They are predators. It will prey their insects and it will eat it. Lot of spiders in the paddy field. They are beneficial insects. So whatever the insect is coming to eat your field, they will eat these things. But if you are spraying the chemicals to this space, these natural enemies that are trying to eat these insects also will die. Why? Because of the chemicals indiscriminately kill whatever the organism is there. The natural enemy population is dying, then the natural control will gone. If the natural control is gone, then your ecosystem will become an imbalance, unbalanced curve. That is one example. Now the human population is increased. It's in the, it will, I told you it's, it will reach 10 billion, 2000, now 8.1 billion. Everywhere human population, everywhere human. Other organisms you suppressed, you are clearing the forest, intruding everywhere. We are, that's what we are expecting a sudden environmental changes because the need for the food, for the wealthy life of human being, we are exploiting the natural resources. You need a car. Exploiting mining and metals. You need driving a car, so mining of uh, fuel, the burning that fuel, releasing carbon dioxide, 
environmental temperature is increasing. So and for the environmental temperature is increased, you need not to sit in the home without fan and air condition. You are producing, making air conditions and uh, fans. This again and working air conditions and fan creating lot of heat to the environment. Again, heating and heating. And you are throwing this whatever the synthetic fertilizers and chemical. Your land is now sick because you have thrown lot of and whatever the excess amount uh, apply to the plant and it will reach to the water reservoir. That's what is coming with the chemical mixed water. People are drinking. So then people are failing with the kidneys. Lot of cancer, thousands and thousands of cancers. And kidney failures. Many people in Andhra Pradesh, those uh, Andhra Pradesh, Pradesh, Monorak, those they see because but chemicals leached down from these up countries, from country over earlier, T states, uh, other fee, other field, they are spraying lot of harmful chemicals with the rain water is is washing. It's coming with the Mahavali stream. It's coming towards to the central pro the lowland areas up to the Vaunia. So, <laughs> where these channels are coming with the water is bringing lot of rich of sources of synthetic chemical. You are swimming and using this water and make sick you. Finally, what will happen? Our president but made a good decision to ban these chemicals. But I, I expect that in 10 years ago, this one, now it's happened. Farmers will try, no problem. Because we, whether you decide it, whether you want sick generation or healthy generation with low population. That's what COVID is there. God sent the COVID to kill the people because population is high now. Should die. At least to half of the population in the world should die if our other generation want to survive healthy. So too much of population in the earth. So COVID is a good, it's a natural control. People want to die. Otherwise, the, uh, how this earth will survive? Right? So keep it in your minds for the natural balances. This world is not for the human being, for all the organisms. So human being is a nasty animal in the world. Nasty, very nasty animal in the world, exploiting all the resources everywhere. Stealing milk from the cow, right? So stealing all the whatever the metals and other things from the uh, soil for your, your use. Stealing, uh, cutting the trees because trees are producing oxygen for the, all the living organisms. So cutting the tree to making the woods and the timber and other purposes. The carbon dioxide is you are disturbing. Now COVID nine, no oxygen. How you will get an oxygen because you are cutting trees, clearing the forest. That's what the God made the decision to send the COVID. It will target your lungs because you are removing the world oxygen to plants to without oxygen to die. Right? So that's a such example, good example. In this scenario, you can learn many things. Why we want to back to the organic ecology. That's what the UN now inform that one is another 10 years is an ecological restoration. We have to go 20, 50 years back. How it will happen, the people should die. Otherwise, it will not happen. It won't happen. Because we need food now. For production of the food, but we won't. We want the land and high yielding varieties. For the, if you are using an organic inputs, the high yielding varieties will not perform. You want to go back your Radhaki Nati and um, uh, Sutuki Nati and Motta Karpan, Pacha Permal, those cultivars. That's what the, uh, we can get deal. How much of will we, we will get it? Quarter of that high yielding variety is in. If the quarter of the high yielding variety is in, mean, you will get small amount of food. If you are getting small amount of food, mean, many people will, um, will survive without food. So people should die. Otherwise, you cannot. Restore your ecosystem back. It will be very difficult. Right? You understood how do the insects become pests? Because of these five anthropogenetic activity made these insects become a pest. 
nowadays what will uh, what is human is doing so because they know so they are sorting of food they think that what they are doing they are started to eat insects now everywhere we are going the china vietnam markets right so cockroaches fry that cockroach fry and also if you are going there um, some sometimes you can find so the stick i right, took pick stick will be there inserted with an grass hoppers fry you can taste like a lollipop taste uh, grass hoppers because you need a food no plant no so that what you are doing no other animals you have to hunt and eat they they are thinking that so insects are abundant in the world so they can use this high protein these insects are high proteins they convert so now there are many companies you know opens in the uk to produce insect based protein right insect based would like um, um, better than this meat better than the high proteins with less environmental damage so it is better to produce from this insects right so then integrated management i told you right so due to these problems they started the integrated pest management integrated pest managements they proposed it mean integrated pest management mean not rely on chemical not only use one technique use whatever the possible techniques available that is compatible to the environment and the system and the time when you are cultivating your crop or which stage of crop everything you should consider and the environment and the crop and the available resources and you should use all to minimize the pest population below the economic damage level mean so if the insect is Uh, we are considering the if a pest insect or other things causing the loss in 5% we call it as a pest so that's what you have to reduce the population that should not cause above the 5% that is a tar not to control mean 100% removal if you are applying chemical is a killing 100% removal that's what you have to use all the possible technique and methods as compatible manner as possible to maintain the pest population at levels below those causing economically unacceptable damage say fear 1968 they murdered here with the basic principle of selection integration implementation selection integration implementation based on the economically viable environmental is sound socially acceptable society should accept so an ecologically viable means so it, it should not harm the environment economically feasible mean it should not be cost right it should not be cost loss that is the way you should make a pest management if you are doing that definitely you should not harm the environment and also you can decline the reduce the pest population below those uh, cause the 5% economic damage that is we called as an integrated pest management right so for the integrated pest management <clears throat> so four general types of damage for the, for the integrated management if you want to implement that one there are several steps first steps mean so how these insect are causing damages you should know right so insect can cause a directly damage it may be indirect damage it may be that only may sometimes the insect will not eat it transmit the vector or combinations why and how when control action is need you need this information because indirect damage mean so they will not feed economically important part they will eat leaves they will eat stem and so they will eat bark for example a shoot and fruit borer in brinjal their main target is a brinjal fruit 
Our food is brinjal fruit, not brinjal leaves. So they are targeting brinjal fruit. That's what it is targeting. Direct damage to the economically important part. You see, economically important part. Direct damage. Indirect damage means it's a leaf. For example, if the army worm, maize army worm, not take the maize army worm. It is eating every everything, right? So it's normal, general army worms, or some of these caterpillars, they are eating leaves, not the fruits, tomato or brinjal. If they are eating leaves, then economically important part is not get damaged. Then the damage. Uh, severity is less. Here, damage severity is very high, and vector diseases. Or uh, these plants, when they are eating or sucking the sap from the plant, it will not cause any damages to the plant. But while they are sucking the fruit, uh, uh, the sap from the fruits or plants, they are ejecting the saliva with a virus. Some of the leaf hoppers, especially the leaf hoppers, these viruses are creating trouble. So, economically important part, parts will get damaged. Fruit will become a small or twisted fruit, yellowish color fruit. Color will change. Quality of the leaves, leaves, the diseases with maybe wilt. Everything can happen. So, it can cause yield and quality losses both. And contamination, especially the stored product inside. When you are harvested, you are storing this one in a warehouses. The warehouses we are having this paddy grain and the poppya and the green gram and black gram. Some beetles and weevils will come and attack. The rice, if you are storing in the rice in your home, you would have seen that rice moth. Eat all the rice grains. That is we call as a contamination. I mean. While they are eating, excreting the excreta and the molting exuviae, everything will be in the grain. That is we call as contamination. Sometimes you would have seen that one when you are eating a bread, you could have seen the beetles, dead beetles. It's uh, when you are tasting uh, some of the groundnut, you could have seen that some of the beetles and frosts. We call as a contamination. Sometimes you would have seen that the bitter taste. Ground nut when you are eating bitter taste. What is bitter taste? It's an aflatoxin, but we are facing that nowadays a problem in coconut oil aflatoxin. That is an aflatoxin. It's as well as contaminated ground nuts. It's not only in the coconut oil, right? Many foods are getting in fact uh, contaminated with this aflatoxin. So that is the damage you should. So the importance of the plant protection. So you know the importance of the plant protection in your course. We are studying what is the scope and importance of the plant protection. So the what is the importance of the plant protection is a pests and diseases by the insect and microbes. Therefore, the human is dependent on the food, clothing, furniture, and housing. So therefore, the important of the plant protection is needed. Why? Because right? so because we need or we depend on these uh, damages. Uh, they, we depend on these crops and the products for our food, clothing, and furniture and housing. If we are if you are facing difficult to get these things, so we need to study the plant protection. That is a very important why we are studying the plant protection. Many million of people even today, they depend on their own garden to get the food, especially in Indian villages, in some part of the Sri Lanka, some village level people, they are raising their own, own gardens. They, they are satisfied with their that food. If the pest and attacking their own garden, then millions of people will die without food. Therefore, the why the important the plant protection is important. 
and quality and quantity reduction so so much of quality and quantity reductions can happen the pet is attacked that's what you think you may you know? so when you are going market in the market if you are finding the brinjol with holes bow holes pest attacks holes will you buy that one we are going there in your, uh, in your um, um, supermarket you are finding brinjol with good color and good shape will you buy that yes you buy that one but you will not buy this one why because it's pest attack quality low quality but low quality is healthy why pest attack no chemical why this one is a good quality so full of chemical that is why you are eating our people are eating why you are eating good quality because we are like people you are eating good quality with chemicals that will cause diseases to you the pest attacked food uh, foods and vegetables are excellent so free from chemicals that's what you see have you ever tasted the squirrel attacked mango very nice have you ever uh, taste you can taste try if you want you can taste this pest attacked brinjal and other things in the market you cook it will be very nice curry because taste and flavor will be there because there is no chemicals right no chemical you see where in which vegetables these uh, some of the rabbit and other things i eat carrot and other things because they need which one is good so healthy an increased prices of the products to consumer because the pest incidence is very high they need the management cost the management cost is very high so they have to sell the uh, product in high prices then the consumer they have a conflict with the consumer and producer then then the government will have to um, make a decision on the fixed price increase the prices of the product and destroy the beauty of the environment and environmental damage you see that the pests are damaging if your pest is lot so when you are raising a garden in your home if the insect is coming and eating your garden but you feel it sad the beauty of the environment so gardens in many gardens and grasslands the pests and diseases are attacking the beauty will go landscaping will go and also environmental damage if the big trees are attacked by the beetles the big trees are dying what will happen the forest full forest will die if the full forest is dying then environmental problem no you will not get rain your temperature will increase oxygen content will be less that's a financial losses financial losses means for management causes for management of these uh, you know you will lose your finance and also in tax for the importation of these chemicals to control that changes of agricultural pattern if the pest is continuously attack what will happen what you will do is you will change the agricultural pattern to field to the glass houses and greenhouses protected agriculture now government has banned the insecticide what will happen so we are moving towards to inorganic to organic agriculture pattern is shifting why this is because of this pest attack influence of the industries we are lack of raw material because most of the especially if you want to uh, produce a paper right if so you want to produce a paper single paper you need to cut a big trees there is no trees because of the pest attack the trees are dying so raw material no need raw, raw material for the paper production the paper cost will high So industry sometimes without raw material industry may need to close. And pest and disease even change the food habits of the human being. If the pest is attacking on potato and continuously potato, potato prices will increase, four hundred, five hundred, six hundred. But you will do, you will not use a potato. You will change the pattern. That happened with the turmeric. The government banned in, uh, imposed import policies. So uh, for the for a year. The so my uh, turmeric prices were very high, seven thousand, eight thousand. 
what will happen so human omitted turmeric they ate now all the farmers started to cultivate turmeric turmeric price now declined it's a good policy so our farmers started to cultivate turmeric so import tax ban no import tax that's how this organic now government banned these insecticides and this fertilizer so we have to move the organic agriculture early few years maybe high will be very difficult for farmers to produce but in later you all will be happy because you will be healthy government need to spend, no need to spend much money to the health center right so with this i am stopping here with and we will discuss uh, the other things later and if you have any clarification please you can ask